Hey everybody, today I'm going to be moving things with sound. Now when you first hear this, you may think that that sounds pretty easy, especially if you've ever listened to some loud speakers. For example, let's play a low frequency on the speaker here. And I'll put this paper in front of the speaker. You can see that when I move this paper next to the large speaker here at 20 hertz, that it just vibrates back and forth. So it's not like the paper gets blown away or anything, it just wiggles back and forth. So that means we already know it's easy to wiggle things with sound. That's because sound itself is a wave. For example, I have here a wave machine. You can see as I turn this dial here, it makes these pegs move up and down in a wave. Now if you've ever been surfing, you know that you can ride this type of wave. This is what the waves are like in the ocean. So if you get just the right spot and catch the wave, for example, if I put this ball on here, you can see that you can easily ride the wave and the wave can push a particle along. So it might be easy to think that sound could maybe push a particle through the air pretty easily if it's a wave. But the problem is the type of wave that sound is is not this type of wave. This is what's called a transverse wave, but sound is a longitudinal wave. You can see how the longitudinal wave is different than the transverse wave. So the wave that's propagating through it is the part that's kind of squished together. You can see it moving through like this. Before we continue, you know who else loves science? This guy. It's called spontaneous combustion. And that's why I'd like to thank Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. What I like about this game is the really cool graphics in it and the storyline of the game. As you know, Raid just hit their two year anniversary. Raid's huge already, and the whole anniversary thing makes it an awesome time to join one of the biggest gaming communities out there. You might also be able to get involved in the very first ever clan versus clan tournament and get a chance to compete directly against another clan. On top of that, they got some really big updates coming later in the month, including a new Doom Tower rotation with two new tough bosses. Raid also just released the very first batch of the amazing Shadokan faction a brand new Asian inspired faction with some amazing looking champions to get. So if you want to get a huge head start in Raid, all you have to do is click the link in my description or scan the QR code found here. And you'll get your free epic champion Jotun, who is amazing for the Doom Tower, 100k silver, 50 gems, and three ancient shards, so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in the game. All of this treasure will be waiting for you here. And once you're in, you can find me in the game under the name at the Action Lab. And if you're fast, you can even join my clan. And thanks again to Raid for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to our experiment. So when I rotate it pretty rapidly, you can see the squished together part propagating through. So there's areas of squished together parts and there's areas of spread apart parts. And this is actually what's happening in the air when you create a sound wave. As to create a sound wave, you just wiggle something in the air. And when you wiggle something in the air, as it pushes against the air, it creates high pressure because it's pushing it, squishing the air together. But then when it gets pulled back, it creates low pressure because it's spreading it back. So this is a two-dimensional longitudinal wave, but sound is a three-dimensional longitudinal wave that spreads out in a sphere around it. So because sound is a longitudinal wave, you see how it can't really push a particle along through it. So how are we supposed to continually move something through space using sound if it's a longitudinal wave? So let me show you how we're gonna do this using a two liter bottle here. If you've ever blown in a bottle, you know that it can make pretty cool sounds. For example, if you blow in it just right, it sounds like this. The sound that you're hearing is caused from something called Helmholtz resonance. When you blow in the bottle, you create a pressure wave that moves down the bottle. But because it's actual air moving that has some momentum to it, once it ricochets off the bottom and comes back up to the top, it actually has a little bit of momentum which carries the pressure wave outside the bottle. So it's actually lower pressure in the bottle than outside the bottle. And then the low pressure sucks it back in and then high pressure spits it back out, low pressure sucks it back in, high pressure sucks it back out. And that high pressure and low pressure fluctuating inside the bottle is moving the walls of the container a little bit. And so it's pushing on all the air around it at a regular pattern and that creates the sound. You can actually feel this vibration when you hold it and blow on it. You can feel it vibrate in your hands. The frequency at which the bottle vibrates is dependent on the speed of sound in the bottle, but it's also dependent on that neck length and also the neck area and also the volume of the bottle. So that means depending on the shape of your bottle, the length of it, you can get all sorts of different sounds from bottles. For example, here's a smaller bottle and it should produce a higher frequency because of the smaller volume. 
What's really interesting is you've probably actually been inside a Hemholtz resonator before. If you've ever driven in a car and you have one window down, you probably notice that it hurts your ears sometimes. It feels like you have this pounding on your eardrums. That's because the car is actually acting like a Helmholtz resonator. And the way that you stop that sound from happening is by opening another window of the car and then it doesn't happen anymore because you can't build up that pressure wave inside of it. It just exits the other end. Now you know what a Helmholtz resonator is, but that doesn't actually help you know how it's going to propel something forward. So if you just have air moving in and out of the bottle, it shouldn't propel it forward because overall the same amount of air that went out of it is also going in it. So it doesn't have a net movement of air this way. Now that would be true if it were exactly laminar flow coming out of the back of the bottle, but it's not. When the air comes out of the bottle, it actually creates a vortex at the mouth of the bottle. So what happens at the mouth of the bottle is called vortex shedding. Vortex shedding looks like this, where alternating vortices are formed at the mouth or going around some object. Now this vortex is really important, here's why. So a spinning vortex in a fluid is a little bit harder to move than a stagnant fluid. That's because it has some momentum and it's spinning back upward, and so if you try to push off of it, those particles that are spinning upward can hit off of it. And so those particles are spinning and turning, and as something comes down and pushes off of it, it can push it back up. So by spinning the air or fluid below it, it creates a virtual wall. So at just the right timing, because the vortice is oscillating back and forth, as the air goes in, it can draw in just fine, but as the air goes out, it, it hits another vortice that was right there, and so it pushes off of it and creates a little bit higher pressure in this direction. So it can push the bottle in this direction. The only thrust that is created is on the end that has the vortices that they can push off of. So here's what we're going to do for our experiment. First, we need to figure out what is the Helmholtz resonance frequency of this specific bottle? And all we need to do to find the resonant frequency is use an app that looks at all the different frequencies of sound that it's hearing. For example, here's one app called Decibel X, and you can see this is the sound in the room right now as I'm talking, but as I blow in the bottle, you'll see a specific frequency rise up. So you can see a frequency right around 112, 113 hertz there. So that means the Helmholtz resonance of this specific bottle is around 112 hertz. So what I'm going to do is I just need to vibrate the walls of this bottle at 112 hertz. So I'm not gonna blow in it, but I'm just gonna create sound waves in the room at 112 hertz, and that'll vibrate the walls of the container. And as it vibrates the walls of the container, it will create that flow that goes in and out of the bottle at the right frequency that will create the vortices that the pressure and waves can push off of, and it'll thrust the bottle in this direction. Okay, let's get this balance right in the middle here. Okay, so notice how this isn't moving at all. It's completely still. Now I'm gonna turn on a frequency of 112 hertz. But if I go to some other frequency, they don't move at all. It's hard to visualize how air can be thrust out of it when the volume of this is staying completely constant on average. But you can see this all happening more clearly if I put smoke in the bottle. Okay, let's fill this up with some smoke here. And if we look at this in slow motion, you can actually see the vortex shedding happening. So this phenomenon is really weird. We're propelling the bottle forward by shooting air out the back, but we're replacing the air in it continually as well. 
And so there's actually no net movement of air. The air inside of it stays exactly the same volume. But it does work with these vortices creating a virtual wall on the end of it here, propelling it forward. If there were no vortices, there'd be no net movement. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet. And you can also hit the bell so that you can be notified when I release my latest video. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.